who doesn't toy with the idea of making their own app, release it into the App Store, and retire early? I imagine most of you, right? I mean, I love making games for clients, but I love playing with my daughter Maya more. So we actually managed to release our app in June this year, and I'm going to tell you all about what was involved and what we learned for it. And I really hope it will make you go for it as well. Graham and I met in London at a company called Digital Outlook, where we created lots of websites for, for things like Alice in Wonderland, Toy Story, Tron, and we started to get pretty good at it. But not everything was made to last, and I decided to move back to Holland, and Graham went off to Sydney in search of sun, surf, and beaches. The end, right? Luckily not. Because about a year ago, Graham, excited about the idea of leveraging our game design experience, called me up and said we should release an app and get it into the App Store, retire early. I didn't have to think long about it, because <laughs> I really missed working with Graham. First problem, um, Graham lives in Sydney. I live in a lovely little city here called Eilst, which is about 16,559 kilometers apart. Uh, luckily, we quickly set up Skype calls every week, which really works because you didn't want to be seen doing less stuff than the other guy. Uh, we used Trello to keep track of our progress and to see what everybody was working on, and Dropbox to sync our files. Easy. You can work with somebody on the other side of the planet. By this time, I realized how much fun my daughter Maya was having with playing all the games from Tokaboka on her iPad. So Graham and I had a little chat, and we said we should make games for kids. It was a nice challenge as well, because making games for kids is totally different than making games for grown-ups. It was a start, and we really think back happily uh, with all the happy memories we had making games for Mr. Man, for example, for their website. So it was a start. We were going to be the next book, Toka Boca, bring in the millions and generate a lot of smiles on kids' faces. Excellent, let's do this. Let's eye up the competition, though. There's a famous quote, um, I choose my friends for their good looks, my acquaintances for their good characters, and my enemies for their good intellects. We picked our enemies carefully. There are loads of big brands out there like Disney um, and Fireman Sam and all that sort of stuff, but we focused on the ones that set up their own IP within the apps world, and the big player to beat is Toka Boca. They sell about $60 million worth of apps each year, so let's do this. Um, Great portfolios, and it's really important to watch kids play apps of the competition. That's my daughter. Because um, I can imagine the developer uh, didn't have in mind that you can actually put, I don't know, about 50 odd uh, things on their face. It's really good to watch. Um, so we needed something more than an app. We needed something that we can install our brand values into. So we started sketching out some ideas and you know, it's starting to get there. I uh, started jotting down some names, tipper two toys, which sounded fun. And the first name we came up with was Nachapi. I'm sure everybody knows what a Nachapi is. <laughs> it's also a nice connection between me and Graham, who's originally from South Africa. It's basically a bush baby or a night monkey. Um, so that kind of works well with kids, because they're little night monkeys, and he looks pretty cute. So that's a Nachapi. Uh, we decided against it because um, English people tried to pronounce it like Najapi, uh, and it didn't quite work. And we came up with a bunch of names that kind of sounded fun, didn't exist yet on the internet. No idea where Pakaku came from, but probably after a few beers, you never know. Um, but the name, then we started to play around with our names, because my name is Job, his name is Graham, so maybe have two characters, Jojo and Hemi. Then we thought, well, this character thing is a good idea. Let's park that for now. And then we finally settled on Mop It Up. And Mop It Up is like a Dutch slang for cutie pie, which is something I call my daughter a lot. And it really worked, because it didn't exist yet on the internet. Excellent. <laughs> um, so obviously involved my daughter to uh, try out these names. Um, mm. Is it Pakaku? Mop It Up? Of Nachapi? Of en wat vind je het leukste? Nog happy! <laughs> Oké, okay, best out of three. <laughs> Nog happy! Nog happy! Ja, yeah, uh, so we basically ignored her advice here and went with Mop It Up instead. Um, boom! <laughs> so we've got our brand. Um, now we needed a product. We started sketching some ideas which are based around animals on a farm, because uh, kids love animals, right? They were kind of cute, they worked, uh, but wasn't quite there yet. 
Uh, and it wasn't until I was on holiday with my family on an island, um, and I basically spent the whole afternoon making the craziest ice creams with my daughter, like with seashells on top and empty crabs and basically anything you can find on the beach. And I thought, yes, let's do this. Let's make an app where kids can create ice creams and they can go nuts. Wicked. So we have a brand, we have a product. Uh, now we just need to find a way to differentiate ourselves from the competition. And our way to do that was to incorporate stories into our app. So you can really involve the kids into your app uh, if you set up the story so they understand why they're making ice creams. And it's a really nice connection as well between parents and kids. Because, for example, when I bring my daughter to bed, we always read through the Mop It Up story, and then I let her make one ice cream, and then she goes to sleep most of the night. Uh, but it's wonderful. <laughs> so we have that. Now we have a brand, a product, and a way to differentiate ourselves. Let's, crack, let's get cracking. Uh, we created some initial designs, and they, they kind of worked with a cute polar bear, and it was all very pink and blue and cute. Um, but we were missing something, something that would help us set apart help us set apart from the competition, something that could make it really unique. So what do you add? Monsters, of course. So we started sketching again and turned this cute little ice cream van into a big monster truck and kids were going to create this crazy bat-infused ice creams with eyeballs on top. Yeah, that works. So these are a couple of monsters we created. We've got uh, Smut and Disco and Spike and there are a bunch more and we gave them all names, different quirks, habits, um, and that really works when you try to uh, help them find their way through all the apps you were going to create. So we have a brand, a product, a way to differentiate ourselves. We've got monsters. Um, and by this time, you might realize uh, I'm, I'm using my daughter a lot for uh, testing the app and things, you know, keeping her up late. <laughs> She's really loving it. Uh, no, she is really it's loving it. <laughs> it's a uh, snit. Yes, I do. Yeah. And she basically keeps pushing me, because uh, uh, I'm not making this up. She kept hassling me, so, Dad, when is the app finished? Come on. Uh, which meant lots of iterations, because she was playing it, other kids were playing it, and it really makes you fine-tune your app. Because, for example, on this screen, initially we had that you need to select a container and then select OK to approve it, which is a very grown-up way of thinking. Uh, kids just click that one and want that one. Tiny tweak, big difference. Uh, on this screen, they could put all the, um, uh, the scoops on top of the ice cream. And we initially had that you could put four scoops on, because that's about as much you can fit on the screen. And then you needed to move on. But I quickly realized that kids really love doing this. Um, so they can basically keep on pressing, and we just move them down. Not a small tweak, which made a big difference. Um, something we couldn't, hadn't thought of ourselves is that uh, feeding the toppings directly to the monster instead of putting them on the ice cream. Kids are great when it comes to uh, making up stuff like that. Um, so by that time, we had it. I mean, we had our app. Let's test this thing. And we basically uh, rounded up all the kids we could find, my kids, my family's kids, uh, random kids on the street. <laughs> no. um, but it's really good to, uh, to not tell them how to use the app, because um, that way you can really see if your app works, if, they, if it's simple enough for kids to understand, uh, and make videos of it. Um, because that way you can re-evaluate it afterwards and I can share my experiences with uh, Graham all over in Sydney. And he did the same thing. This is a, this a kid in Sydney, as you can tell. <laughs> He's playing the app. Uh, what we also did is... <laughs> yeah, you, you're laughing now, but it's um, testing it with grandparents and old, old people, basically. Um, and <laughs> Sorry. They, they don't get it. They just don't get the app. They, they were asking me, like, yeah, but what kind of ice cream should I create? Should, should it have four, or should I use the same color scoops? How many toppings should I put on? Which is, again, a very grown-up way of playing games. Um, kids, for kids, it's just a toy. They just use it in whichever way they like. And it was really interesting to see that uh, old people don't get it. <laughs> um, I basically used every opportunity I had uh, to test this app. So kids' parties, uh, wherever I went to, uh, I brought my mop it up pins and the color rings along, uh, let the kids play, and they created all sorts of really cool stuff. You have to be a bit careful, though, not be that guy in the corner with the kids. <laughs> uh, so speak, speak to the parents first before you talk to the children. <laughs> um, which gave us a lot of feedback, uh, fresh ideas, um, which is wonderful. Things we're going to incorporate into our, uh, our next update. So by this time, we had tested it. The app was finished. We need to get official. 
Um, setting up a company is already quite a challenge, but when your partner lives in Sydney, that's a double big challenge, because um, there was basically lots of back and forth in with FedEx, physical documents, getting them over to the solicitor. But after a bit of, bit of work, that we got it sorted. Yes, signing away for the company. Uh, then the bank account took another seven weeks, because banks uh, find it very interesting if half of the company is owned by uh, another company overseas. But we got there in the end. So, oh my God, it's really, really, really happening. And we made a launch trailer to promote the app. Mobile! That's my daughter as well, <laughs> obviously. Yeah, lots of good stuff. It's available on iTunes and Google Play. <laughs> um, so by this time, uh, we were on holiday in uh, Bristol in England, and uh, through digital age style, uh, I plugged in my iPhone of the data connection, released the app into the App Store, and let's bring, bring on all these downloads and amazing reviews, right? It takes a little while for it to be updated, but that's OK. We can wait to become millionaires. Um, checked in the next day. Boom, live. It was on. Uh, First little oh shit moment, because we basically uploaded all the graphics, rotated 90 degrees. Uh, hey ho, quick update, sorted that out. And then all the downloads. That didn't quite happen. <laughs> <laughs> bit, bit of a reality check there. Um, uh, luckily, the next day we had about 30 downloads, thanks to all the lovely friends and family. Uh, <laughs> so please download our app. <laughs> But hey, hang on. Surely in all of your experience, you've heard about marketing. Um, yep, we did. So we did prepare a bunch of Facebook ads. Um, and it's really funny to see that the ones on top with the actual children in there perform way better than the ones without. And it's really handy on Facebook. You can just upload a bunch of them. And through A-B testing, uh, they basically choose the ones that perform well. Um, it cost us about 215 pounds, uh, which got us 20,000 people reach. Out of the 20,000, 160 people click through, which apparently is really good click-through rate. And out of those 160, two people bought our app. <laughs> <laughs> but hey, two people, that's good. Uh, so basically, that means a massive loss. But <laughs> that doesn't matter, because it was a, a, a nice experience. We've got some um, uh, new likes on our Facebook page. Um, but we're probably going to focus on cross-promoting our app a bit more than spending money on Facebook again. Um, but on the Facebook subject, uh, it's really important to involve your public, uh, the people who are interested in your brand, uh, along the way. So we uploaded lots of sketches and cool things so we can get feedback along the way. Uh, and you can do fun stuff with videos, because Facebook loves videos. Um, yeah, once again, uh, and with Facebook, as with all other stuff, it's great to get all the tracking insights, because that really makes you focus uh, really well on your markets and the target audience. Um, as you can see, the videos perform way better than images, which is a really good uh, thing to know. Uh, social media, super important when you want to build your own brand. Uh, don't take my word for it, just Google Mop It Up and you'll see all our social channels pop up. Um, so by this time, we really want to improve sales. So step one, obviously lower the price because people love a bargain. And we dropped it from the uh, sort of $2.99 uh, to $1.99, which made no difference. And then we had it for free for four days. Uh, in, it was early July with the stupidly hot days. Uh, actually did some analog marketing of putting up posters, um, and that, that really got us somewhere. That basically meant 4,000 downloads in a couple of days, with China going nuts over it. Uh, thanks to Google Translate, I could kind of make sense of this review. They said something like, um, please feed ice cream to the monsters, because otherwise they will eat the kids. But <laughs> not, sure, not sure if Google Translate was uh, messing that up. Um, you could tell by which point we went uh, free. Um, <laughs> um, but it was a good learning, because that made us realize that cross-promotion is a really valuable tool. So we're working on a second app now, and once that one goes live, we're going to make the first one free and then put like a little promo thing in the bottom corner to promote our paid-for app. So that was an interesting experience. Uh, emailed a lot of bloggers who mostly wanted big money for, to write a review, but luckily also some sites really just liked our product and wrote a nice review about it, like this one. 
uh, great reach, 700,000 people on Facebook. So obviously we were again next day checking all the sales. But I guess how many we had? One. <laughs> One sale, but hey. Um, and then grab the low hanging fruit, right? I mean, I wrote a press, uh, press release for all my local newspapers and um, uh, yeah, they bought it. Uh, basically 4,000 downloads in China, app developer from IELTS, awesome. Uh, even got interviewed on Onderop Friesland. Um, did that result into sales? Not really, but it made my parents really proud because they obviously <laughs> they heard me on the radio, which is awesome. Um, then we do a lot of custom thank yous on Facebook, uh, which basically anytime someone writes something positive about us, uh, we do things like this. Uh, you get another chance for a retweet or a like. So did it work? Um, well, not in terms of sales. Uh, let me just go back. Uh, not in terms of sales, but we did notice that everybody liked it. The kids were liking it. People were playing it. Uh, so by this time, we needed some inspirational quotes to keep us going. So there are only two mistakes one can make along the road to truth. Not going all the way and not starting. And this one from the famous Valentino Rossi. Um, I never lose. I either win or I learn. So what did we learn? Well, we put a lot of tracking in there and you see that people are still playing the app, which is fantastic. Um, and the real-time tracking on Google is really cool because you can see points popping up of kids playing your app. Uh, visitors from China, fantastic. So we spent about three and a half thousand minutes on Skype, um, 520 Trello tiles ticked off, 430 hours of illustration and animation, 9,000 lines of code. Uh, we invested that much, earned that much. <laughs> hey. Uh, but this is way more important to me. 10,000 ice creams created, which means 10,000 happy kids, hopefully. Dots is their favorite sprinkle. Purple is their favorite color. Um, eyeball their favorite topping. But this one is cool, because basically there was a kid that on a single ice cream pressed one of the cannons 473 <laughs> times. Possibly the same that added 300 scoops in a single ice cream. Um, yeah, that's, that's the fun stuff. So 4,000 downloads in Apple, 33 in Google Play, come on. Um, so yeah, which gets me to the end of my story. A <laughs> um, couple of things, you gotta be tenacious. When you start something like this, you really need to finish it. Because it's way much more fun if you finish it, because then you can speak at conferences like this. Um, you really do it for the love. And what's, what was really important for me is to involve my wife and my daughter into it, because you're basically stealing away their time. So they need to be a big part of it. Um, use the local newspapers, launch as soon as possible, well, black as many free conference sp speaker spots as you can, obviously. Uh, what I'm really trying to say is it doesn't matter if you live on opposite sides of the planet or you may not earn a penny. If the passion is there, you can do it. Thank you very much. Thank you.